This one weird trick will cause your church to multiply. All research leads to a same conclusion. The most effective way in which to evangelize a population remains the continual starting of new little churches. Of course, some new churches will die, but others will survive to multiply to many generations. There are no one practices that a church can implement in order to become many churches, provided it implements one weird trick in order to get the results that the apostles did when the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Although there are several well-known methods that help in starting many new churches, one weird trick surpasses all the rest. I shall tell you it in a moment. First, let us review ten generally recognized practices that lead to healthy numerical growth of churches that can soon reproduce in new churches made up of new believers. In a movement of planting new churches that make disciples, believers find persons of peace who open their home and networks. Leaders train all believers to evangelize entire households and to baptize them. Workers strengthen the faith of new believers to persevere through persecution. Leaders train workers to make disciples who obey Jesus' commandments. Leaders train disciple-makers to start and lead new cells and house churches. Everyone allows the Holy Spirit to distribute and to activate speaking and serving gifts. Leaders expand branching lineages of churches and leaders that reproduce. Leaders train shepherds to coach several generations of new leaders on the job. Trainers edit simple training materials, distributing these through coaches. Workers report on their activities and outcomes, which allows leaders to track progress and to lay new plans. Whilst these ten practices can lead to phenomenal growth and multiplication, when supported by abundant faith and prayer, these depend upon one weird trick that makes everything else succeed. This weird trick can be seen operating in the ministry of Jesus. And he called the twelve together, and gave them power and authority. He sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. On their return, the apostles told him all that they had done, and he took them and withdrew apart. In his very last words before he returned into heaven, Jesus commanded his apostles, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. The same weird trick can be seen operating in the ministry of, of Jesus' apostles. Be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men, who will be able to teach others also. What is that weird trick that multiplies churches? Here it is. Empower others to obey the commandments of Jesus while coaching them to empower others in turn to do the same. Let me repeat that. Empower others to obey the commandments of Jesus while coaching them to empower others in turn to do the same. Whenever and wherever church leaders apply this weird trick without prejudice, God brings to their churches new believers. He always does. Wherever leaders form new churches with new believers, churches multiply continually. 
Therefore, if I were the devil, I would do all I could to prevent your empowering of others to obey Jesus' commandments without your presence or without your express permission. If I were the devil, I would make you so fearful that you would take measures to avoid the following, that anyone else should have authority to teach church doctrines, that anyone else should baptize or serve the Lord's Supper, that anyone else should lead church gatherings, that anyone else receive a ministry title equal to your own, that anyone should start and lead a church without having obtained a theological education, that anyone else should receive help from your church budget. Those are precisely the reasons for which your church has stagnated, is aging, and cannot resist the advance of false religion in your city. Thus, the absolute priority for you and your church is to pray, to plan, and to take action. You must implement the ten practices listed earlier by empowering others to obey the commandments of Jesus while coaching them to empower others in turn to do the same. To obtain more information and free written materials, click on this screen.